Hi everyone, thank you for coming along to this talk. I'm gonna be um, going through what the heck ma is ECMA. I apologize for my bad puns and I can neither confirm nor deny that that will be the last one that you'll hear this evening. Um, so I don't know what kind of level um, you guys who are watching this um, talk are at in terms of your journey into JavaScript. So I hope that this talk will kind of cater to a range of different experience levels. Um, and really this is a talk to kind of get you guys familiar with the concept of ECMAScript and what it means in relation to JavaScript. I think if you have started using JavaScript, you're probably like me, when I first started, get quite confused when you go on Stack Overflow and people are using random combinations of years and letters and numbers and ES5 or 6 or ES2015 and it can get a bit confusing and you might think, what has this got to do with JavaScript? Um, so hopefully I'm going to help um, clear some of that confusion up today. So firstly, let's talk about what is ECMAScript. ECMAScript and JavaScript are the same, except when we talk about ECMAScript, what we're really talking about is the official specification of the coding language that is JavaScript. And JavaScript is the term we use kind of more colloquially, whereas ECMAScript we use, or ES, which is shortened to ES, we use when we're trying to um, refer to a specific version. Um, JavaScript and coding languages are, you know, the same as human languages in, in the fact that they evolve over time, um, they don't stay static. Um, and with something like JavaScript, it's evolving quite at quite a fast pace. And nowadays we get um, so I'll give you a bit about the history of how the language has evolved. Um, so the reason it's called ECMAScript is that the ECMA International is the um, kind of the international committee that decides what features are going to go into each version of JavaScript. Um, the first kind of standard for the language was published in 1997, and then that was officially ES1. Um, and then over the next kind of decade or so, there were a few different releases, ES2, 3, four, five, um, and that was when in 2009, ES5 came out. And that's probably the most, um, that was a pretty big um, release. There was a lot of new features into that. Um, and then since then, they didn't do very much until 2015 when ES6 was released. And this was a pretty big year because in um, 2015, from then onwards, they decided that instead of doing kind of intermittent releases, they were going to start doing releases every single year. Um, at which point it gets a bit confusing to keep naming things like ES6, 7, 8, 9. So from 2015 onwards, you'll start seeing more um, common names named after the year that it was released. Um, and that's kind of the official name of that version is ES followed by the year name. Although some people will still use ES6 to mean ES2015 and ES7 to mean 2016. Um, you know, whatever floats your boat, really. <laughs> um, if you want to know why it's called ECMAScript, really, and not JavaScript 2015 or JS 2015, um, it's the short answer is a copyright thing. ECMA International doesn't actually own the trademark name JavaScript. I think it's owned by a company called Oracle, actually. Um, and so they can't call it, they can't call their standards. Um, JS 2015 or JS 678. Um, yeah. So I don't have a huge amount of time. So I don't want to kind of go down into a huge amount of detail about each individual version of JavaScript since, <laughs> you know, the dawn of time. But um, I will try and highlight just some of the key differences between, um, between the versions and how they kind of relate to what you will be seeing in the browser. Um, and things like that. So I'll start with ES5. That was um, released in 2009. And the biggest things that came out of that, um, of that release was we basically got a whole load of funky um, array functions. Um, and I probably only got started with JavaScript kind of, you know, 
I'm, I'm a millennial, so I got started only, you know, fairly recently in JavaScript in comparison. So to me, I find it, you know, just really strange that these kind of functions that I use every day in my job didn't exist, you know, pre-2009. And, you know, one of the things that I really enjoy about JavaScript is the fact that you can, um, you know, you don't have to write really bespoke for loops or anything. You can use these handy array functions like map and filter and things like that. Um, yeah, so that was kind of the big, the, these are the big releases that came out of um, the 20 <coughs> ES5. Um, and then after that, there wasn't much until um, there wasn't a the next big release was ES2015, ES6. And this is where you'll kind of see a lot online of you know, chatter about the differences between ES5 and ES6, because previously the kind of each change in version wasn't drastically different, but you did get a big shift from when you move from ES5 to ES6. And we start getting, again, it was a big release and you have quite a lot of different um, things that came out of that. Um, I don't want this to be a really boring talk where you just stare at, you know, lists on PowerPoints. So I will try and, um, I have kind of put together a little bit of a demo for you. I'll try and kind of go over some of the key features of the different um, ECMAScript versions since um, ES5 onwards. Um, I'll kind of just try and highlight the differences between them really. So the big difference that I wanna start with between ES5 and ES6 is you'll probably, you may or may not be familiar with in ES5 when you wanna, um, kind of import modules into your code, you would specify, you would declare them in this kind of format. Um, and then from ES6 onwards, you have, um, you, you <coughs> sorry, you have more of this um, style where you can import um, just straight like that. And you can do kind of import asterisks from the file name if you want. Um, and similarly, you also have slightly different formats for exports as well. So in something like ES5, you had a, you know, a file that was yeah, written in ES5, you would export your functions or um, variables and things using module.exports. Um, whereas in something like ES6, you can just kind of go straight away and um, export something a bit like um, just straight there from next to the, the function. <clears throat> so that's kind of the imports and export side of things. Um, with ES6, you also got um, some new, um, you got some other new features like you got let and const. Um, for those of you that don't know the difference, <laughs> I don't want to do a deep dive into the you know specifics of JavaScript, but just a quick overview. If you kind of declare something using let, it means that you can reassign it later. So here we said Yoda, my name Yoda is. And if you wanna translate that, you can reassign the value of what Yoda is and it won't complain. Um, whereas if you declare it as a constant, you will get an error saying that you've tried to assign something to a constant variable. Um, you may notice that I have been watching the new season of The Mandalorians this week, so you'll probably see a lot of um, Star Wars references in this demo. <laughs> um, just a heads up on that. Um, what else did you get in ES6? We also get classes. So um, actually one of my colleagues to, that today was talking to me, she's very um, keen on, on Java and she was saying how JavaScript is now trying to be like Java and Java is trying to be like JavaScript. And I think you can kind of see that in the different versions of the languages that are being released. Um, so in ES6, we got kind of, we got classes, which are very similar to what you would get in um, object oriented programming languages like Java, where you can create a whole class of something and then it kind of makes it easier to create new instances of that class. Um, so here we can console log out the characters that we've created here. And you can see it comes up in the console as um, an object of class character. And that kind of suits people that prefer a more kind of class based programming rather than just um, functional based. Um, yeah, and then we also, the big addition in ES6 was um, promises. 
I could, you know, you could spend a whole meetup session explaining promises. So I'm not going to do that. But here's just something for you to look at if you're not familiar with what a promise is. You can resolve or reject the result um, of a promise and you can chain promises together using dot then. That was what was included in the release of promises in ES6. Um, yeah, I think that's kind of the main things that I wanted to show you in the ES6 version. You also got a few other more obscure things. You can find full details of these on websites like W3 Schools or um, MDN and that kind of thing as well. Um, so moving on to, since ES6 was the probably the biggest release in the past kind of <coughs> past kind of five years or so and since then like each year they have done a release um and but they've been kind of smaller and they've had a fewer things so i'll try and kind of for the sake of time bunch them together um so key features that came in es 2016 and es 2017 um we get um exponent exponentiation um, whereas previously you would have to kind of, actually, I think I have an example for you here. Yeah. So previously in prior versions of, um, JavaScript, you would have to do something like math.pal, um, in order to kind of do, um, an exponent. Whereas now since ES 2016, it's just a lot easier, kind of similar to Python syntax. You just do the double asterisk. Um, and oh, this is a good thing to highlight as well at this point is um, ECMAScript is JavaScript is completely backwards compatible. So if you still like your old fashioned version of JavaScript, then you can, you know, still use that to your heart's content. Um, it also is really, and it won't, you know, interfere. You can have a file which has a mixture of the newer versions and the older versions, um, and it's fine. Um, that also means if you have a kind of an older JavaScript project, you don't feel need to feel like every time a new version releases, you don't have to go back and rewrite everything, um, which is also nice. Um, any other, so another nice function we got in ES 2016 was another handy array function includes. So you can kind of search a long array and if it, include will return true or false based on whether it finds the object the string or object that you're looking for which is quite handy um so those were the main those were in fact that was the only stuff that came out in es7 that was a bit of a lazy year for them um for es 2017 we get um yeah we kind of get some more object functions. Um, we also get the biggest one that we get in, um, oops, sorry, the biggest one that we get in ES 2017 is the ability to do async functions. Um, so this is when you're, as we saw in ES 6, when you're um, creating promises, normally if you want to kind of chain different things together, you have to do um, a dot then and then you, have, you want to wait for your promise to resolve or reject and then move on to the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. Um, with ES 20, 2017, we get the um, async and await, which I personally really like to use a lot because that means I don't have to have long chains of dot then, dot then, dot then, dot then. Um, I can just kind of wait for the promise to complete. Um, and then the next line won't execute until that um, the result of that promise has come back. Um, so that's uh, really handy. Some people have very strong opinions about whether they like dot then or the async await format. I think it's a bit like Marmite, you either love it or you hate it. You know, I won't try and tell you which one is better. I'll let you make your own minds up. <laughs> um, all right. So how are we doing for time? Okay, try and speed through a bit. So that is 2018 and 2019. What do we get here? We've got a few more things. Um, ES 2018, we get um, the most interesting stuff I think about ES 2018 is we get dot finally, the spread operator. We also get a few regular expressions, um, functions as well um, for 
if I see if I'll show you a demo. So spread operators, honestly, is probably my favorite of the newer JavaScript functions. If you, I use it all the time, especially if you're doing React and you have, you're trying to update state, it kind of just saves you a lot of time. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with spread operators, um, this is just a quick example. For example, you have a, an object called spaceship and it has a name, pilot and copilot. Um, key value pairs, say you wanna create a new spaceship and it's gonna be exactly the same as your old spaceship, but you just want a new pilot. You don't have to kind of rewrite every single line. You can just use the spread operator to say, I want everything that was in spaceship except pilot, which I'm gonna reassign. And then you can see here, you have spaceship and your new spaceship. They contain exactly the same um, attributes, uh, key value pairs, but just with the one change that you wanted. I use this one all the time because I like to be efficient and it just saves me time and energy and it's great. Um, what else did we get in 2018? We get dot finally. So this is again with promises. Um, if you have a long chain of promises and you wanna specify something that's gonna happen <coughs> way at the end after the, all the thens, after the catch, then you can add dot finally. Um, so for example, in our promise here, we have if our promise resolves, then we can say we wanna do something else we might want to catch the error. And then only once everything else has been completed, then we have finally, we can do whatever we want in this dot finally section. Um, and then moving on to ES 2019, we get um, another few kind of helpful um, array functions. We get some string functions as well, sorry. <laughs> um, I'll just demo a few of them quickly. So dot flat is just if you have nested arrays, you can um, flatten them, kind of the clues in the name. Um, also, if you have, for example, arrays within arrays within arrays, you can also chain your dot flat to kind of flatten it as, as many times as you need, which is really nice. Um, optional catch binding, we got that as well. So that's previously, for example, in, if you see in our promise here, if you want to catch an error, you have to pass an argument normally, which is the error itself. Um, from ES 2019 onwards, you don't need to do that anymore. You can just have a catch without any um, without any um, parameter passed in, which is really nice. And then um, one of the most random ones that I found added, which um, I don't know, it just entertains me. If you really want to, you can, since um, ES2019 came out, you can just convert any random function to a string if you want to. And it will, for example, here, I've just created a simple function. And if I wanted to console log it out, I could console log it out. I have no idea why you would ever want to use this function. Maybe someone who knows JavaScript better than me can tell me what use I have for this, but I just thought it was funky and I wanted to share that with you all today. I didn't know that this existed before I did the research for this talk. So um, yeah, <laughs> just wanted to share that with you today. Um, and then what else do we get? Right, okay, we're almost, we're on the home stretch guys. We're almost up to the present day. Yes, 2020, we get some things, some mathematical things. Big int basically means the JavaScript can now deal with really big integers, whereas before it could only deal with slightly less big integers. Um, we get dynamic imports and optional chaining, um, a bunch of other just kind of random assortment of helpful things. Another promise, um, another promise uh, function there. Um, and in ES 2021, um, I won't show you this because it's been unreleased. We're going to get some really cool stuff. Um, some, another <coughs> array function for replace all, which is where you can just, um, for example, if you had a, a long string, you could just do replace all and then replace any substrings within that string that you want. So if you had something that said, dogs are the best, I love dogs, you could do replace all with cats and say, and then replace that all with cats. Um, promise dot any, 
um, is another, I won't go into a lot of details. I don't want to make this all about promises. Um, basically, there's a lot of cool things that you get with every version of JavaScript. And the best place, if you want to know what is coming, is um, to look at the online docs. Things like W3Schools does really good um, resources on this. Um, so does MDN. Uh, web docs as well you'll find loads of people writing blog posts about what's coming next um the one thing that you i do want to highlight before i run out of time is if you ever see the term es next um that's kind of colloquial term for whatever is the next version of ecmascript um so whatever one is not currently released right now um and then browse compatibility that's a really important thing to take into account um, so currently, the browsers always kind of update slower than their language does. So, and they don't always necessarily release an update of a browser which has the compatibility, which has um, which has all of the features of the next version of ECMAScript. So, and that can cause issues when you're writing your code. You can have errors in different. Some, as something that might work in Chrome might not work in Firefox, depending on what the feature is of the specific version that you're trying to use. Um, and that can be really important to make sure that you're, um, that whatever code you're writing, if it's gonna be run in the browser, like make sure that it's accessible to people that are using different browsers. Um, you can either kind of, again, check the documentation. There's a really good website called Can I Use, which if you wanna use a funky array method that you don't know is in the current version of JavaScript that's supported on, Safari, then you can use the can I use website to check if that function is supported. Um, or you could just um, use transpilers like Babel or Webpack. Um, if you don't know what a transpiler is, um, essentially what that does is it just kind of, if you have a project and you're using a mixture of all different types of um, JavaScript versions, then you can use something like Babel or Webpack to essentially just translate any later version you're using back down to a, an earlier version that will be supported in the browsers that you want to run your code in. Um, so that's really useful. And this is stuff that you should definitely think about whenever you're trying to develop anything that's going to be used by people on the web. Because you never know, there's probably someone's grandma somewhere who is still using Internet Explorer and so will not, you know, be able to read your website if you haven't, you know, properly um, <laughs> considered that. Um, really last quick thing is ECMAScript is an open standard. Um, fun fact, we call um, any languages that are open source, we call them open standards. Only projects um, or source code can be referred to as open source. So when we say that um, something like a language is available um, for you to look at online and contribute to, we call it an open standard. Um, an, an ECMAScript is one of those open standards. So if you really want to see a certain feature um, uh, in the next version of JavaScript, you can go um, to the their GitHub, you can have a look through what's coming, you can look up how to contribute, you can see all the proposals that are gonna go into the next version um, of ECMAScript. Um, yeah, and you can even see which, which um, versions are kind of at different stages in the approval process. Stage four means that it's 100% definitely going in the next version. And then there's kind of different tiers of um, approval for different things. Um, so if you're looking to, um, if you're just curious or you want to get more involved in open source, like this is definitely a nice place to have a poke around. It's very well kind of structured and put together and everything is reviewed by committee. Um, so yeah, I think that was kind of, is that the last thing I have to show with you? Yes, I do. We did it. And I kind of was on time, which is great. Um, thanks very much everyone for listening and I hope that you all learned something new.